to the, let me see, I didn't have a, ah, I would have liked a section there, I forgot to put in a section uh, headings here, but nevertheless, we jump to the final part of uh, today's lecture before we look at R at the end. It is that we are going to meet two other distributions, now we met the normal, substantially. Here is another one. Let's have a look at it here as a, as a plot. There is a function, or rather I should say, there is a distribution called the log normal distribution. It is related to the normal distribution, but it's, it's a distribution that only, you could say, live on the positive interval. So it's a, it's a, in, it's a distribution that is, has, a more, has a better physical meaning and physical interpretations for phenomena which are essentially positive. So, so I guess this is a distribution much better liked by people doing physics for various phenomena where you measure something. It's very much liked by the financial theoretic, theoretical and applied people to model uh, uh, exchange rates and things like that. Uh, things that are, I should say, I was going to say on, only positive, but that's actually not true anymore. Um, but um, nevertheless, mostly positive. The log normal has... We call it like this. I'm going to do it rapidly, and we're not going to dig into the probability details here now. It has a formula, of course, for the density. It looks a bit more... In fact, you could maybe recognize some of the normality in there, but also something more and something more complicated. It has a mean. It has a variance, which looks a bit nasty. Um, it's... As I say, it's a model that you can use for positive phenomena. And it has this feature, really, that something which has a log normal distribution has this property that if you apply the log to it, I mean, if it has a log normal distribution, we are talking positive numbers that has this skewed distribution like a log normal. If you apply the log to this. You can do that theoretically or you do, can do it explicitly if you have numbers. You can apply the log to positive numbers. Then what comes out of the other end of this transformation, it's a nonlinear transformation, what is the result of this will be a normal distribution. So that, that's a bit of an, another way around of defining what is a log normal. Well, a log normal is something that if you apply the log to it, it becomes a normal. So it's kind of a, 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 a sort of an exponential version of the normal distribution, you could say, uh, if you want. Um, anyway, here is the way of saying it, and a way for us that it makes it very easy for us to work with this one, even though it might have looked a bit complicated on the math expression. It is very easy for us to work with it, because if we are given something which has a log normal distribution, we can just by applying, and I'm here, I use the ln, but in, in R, the natural logarithm is called log, and you would have to use some options to have, or other names to have other uh, base, base numbers for the log. But uh, in, in the slides, and I think in the book, is used ln for the natural log. You may have used that previously also. But R uses log for the natural log, just you to be aware of it. Um, if you just apply this to the numbers or to that you have, you can just and, and standardize it. We can just use the standard normal. Let me exemplify very briefly. Here we have some numbers. In this case, it's particle sizes, positive things from physics. Um, if you are really, what you are not a physician, you are a physicist. That's the. If you're a really physicist, you, you wouldn't like a, a normal distribution for something which can never be negative, because the, the normal may go down to the negative numbers at some point. Maybe the probability is so small that in practice it doesn't matter, but still it's there. And from a f physics point of view, that's not very nice. But then we have other distributions, positive distributions like this one. So, to, to work with this, uh, we could take the logarithm, of the data, and then we could have negative numbers. The log to this one becomes a negative one. We get a mean and a variance. B 
basically this is just warming up what I'm going to just um, what we're gonna use here is to have um, the following thing if we're gonna find the proportion of particles within two between two and three let me continue we're gonna find what is for a log normal between two and three Basically, the simple answer would be, uh, we do the first step where we subtract. Note that I, I am sloppy with the equality signs here. Uh, it doesn't matter whether we say less than sharply or less than or equal. It gives the same number. This would then be the same as taking a standard normal less than log. Let me... Let me continue the ln way of putting it. ln to 3 minus, what was the numbers? Numbers was 0.73, the alpha, and this one was 0.44. Minus, and the set is a standard normal, like this. And then we take ln to 2 minus the same. So we basically do, as we have been taught with the normal distribution, we just apply the log. Right. So, so, so that's the easy sort of way of, uh, for you to think about how could I calculate probabilities using the log normal. Well, this is the way. I'm not going to compute the numbers now. I'll leave that open. Of course, it exists in R also. So there you can just use it explicitly. We're going to see one more distribution today. It's a simple and funny one, I find. It's almost the simplest that are the funniest. The uniform distribution in Danish, the lie for dealing. Um, it has a simple density function, which is a constant. For instance, a uniform distribution between 4 and 5 could look like this. It's the same probability throughout. I mean, it has, it's the same probability to be around here as it is to be around here. That's the uniformness, right? For a normal, it becomes more and less and less probable to have events out there. This has the same probability throughout, and then it goes down to zero. It has a mean and a variance. The mean is in the middle, and the variance, actually, funny enough, is this number. You can check that if you want. Um, Example seven, students in a course arrive, this is an assumption, I don't claim you do that, but let's assume we have a model for your sort of, uh, the, how you enter, how you appear, how you arrive to my course here, that we could assume a model where you come exactly and uh, uniformly between 7.45 and 8.15. You don't do that. We could speculate that you did. Um, what would that mean? It means that the same number of people would arrive between uh, the first five minutes of the period as in the last five minutes of the period. Or what is the probability that uh, some random person arrives in this 10-minute slot? Yes, yeah, since the entire slot is a 30-minute slot, then, of course, it's, it's one-third. I mean, there's not, no reason to write up a lot of uh, integrals and densities here. It's just the proportion of uh, time that we're asking. Um, so, another way of saying it, that one-third of you would arrive between this time, right? Between 8.05 to 8.15. The last 10-minute slots, a third of you would arrive there. That's just common sense. It, that's a uniform distribution, that it's uniform. It's there, and it's used for some context, actually. And we're going to meet it again later in the course. That finishes off the next to last part.